the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855 855- 678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1590 WPSL. Time to catch up with Diana Zappa. Diana, how are you? Very good, Kerry. How about you today? Uh, we're hanging in. I've been uh, debating economics with people who believe that Social Security is solvent, it's not a Ponzi scheme, there's plenty of money. And I said, well, where's the money? I said, oh, it's held in Treasury securities. Right, and there's $2.4 trillion in Treasury securities that the trust fund, and I put that in quotes because I don't trust them as far as I can throw them, is holding. And they pay, they receive interest from the Treasury of $100 billion a year on those bonds. And guess what? Where does that hundred trillion come from? Mm-hmm. The budget. All mm-hmm. right. It's adding to the deficit, no matter how you figure it. And the more money they need to pay benefits, because right now what they bring in is not enough to pay the existing beneficiaries. So they have to use the proceeds of the bonds that they're getting, the interest on the bonds. So therefore, it's adding to the deficit, whether you like it or not even though they would like to say that, no, it has no effect on the deficit. It's totally sophistic and untrue. Mm -hmm. Well, and not only that, I mean, less people pay tax, there's more entitlements, and so there's less money going into the pot, and the aging baby boomer group, on top of all of that, is uh, the people who are going to be looking for that social security which the younger demographic, which is not growing, is not contributing to. And they're not going to want to pay for it. They're not going to want to pay 70% of their income. And she says, all you have to do is increase Social Security a percent and a half on the withholding, and it'll be good forever. And Mm. you know that this just can't be true. There's no free lunches here. You can't get something for nothing. And you could get a little bit of something for nothing last week when gold was under 1400 but now, you know what? It's up $28.10 today, Diana, to $1,460. Silver up nearly a buck to 2408 And I'm sure they'll try another slam down tonight or tomorrow. But it looks to me like, you know, this will make six out of the last seven days, I believe, that gold went up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I spent this morning uh, kind of uh, debunking one of my uh, pundits, Real he, smart guy. He wrote this thing. Uh, he's got a website like Beyond, Beyond Neanderthals. And he says, uh, you know, I should sit back and drink a couple of scotches and think about why gold is worth something. It really shouldn't be worth anything. Mm-hmm. And you know what? He might be right, but we have this thing in the world called convention, accepted reality. And the accepted reality is that gold always has value. And the fact is, history shows that gold and silver-based systems, until they're destroyed or debased, always perform better than fiat-based systems, where politicians are free to wreak havoc and mayhem on the amount of currency units in circulation. You're right. I can't just yeah, I know I'm right. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... And, I to- mean, and, you know, the value of gold, the other factor is, is now, I, I went to buy some bullion this week and two stores in Vancouver can't buy it. 
it's not available. I can get the nice fancy go, um, silver coins, but um, you know, basically, you know, that uh, any bars are finished. Yeah. And um, I'm just I've been popping in almost every day. And um, my friend, you know, uh, Rod, his name's Roger Mason. I think I've introduced you to him before. Mm-hmm. He uh, has a um, well, he has a website anyways. It's called It's Young Again Products, which he has all this natural vitamin line and stuff. But he is also a very I mean, he's a major silver bug, and he does uh-huh. what's called the uh, the economic rants, and he puts <laughs> out. Uh, it's it's quite humorous if you want to have. Uh, I mean, he's you know he he's he's got some very extreme pictures and some great um, discussion, and he does a monthly newsletter. So, but the he sent out a special report, the special economic rant today, and he said basically this week the entire world ran out of silver and was quickly running out of gold. As of Thursday, suddenly everyone had silver again. You make it pay a reasonable premium, but that's fine. With $23 a spot, silver a premium is not important. Availability is important. So he kind of went on to say that, well, he said it was out and now it's back. And at $23 an ounce, this is a buy, major buy. And um, everybody should be loading up, and I'm sure they are. Yeah, so my number one uh, saving tip for this week is buy gold and silver at depressed prices and hold on to them till they become way overvalued because it's going to happen. Look, uh, I'm uh, looking at Atmex. I want to look at their products right now that they have, APMEX. Yes. Yeah, no, so, that's I'm uh, looking so right at it. We'll look there. And uh, a little uh, one ounce Perth Mint Gold Bar is now 40 bucks over spot, which is higher than it's been. Mm-hmm. You can buy a 2013 one ounce Silver Canadian Wildlife Series, which I don't recommend. It's twenty six oh four, um, but it is a bullion coin. Let's face right. it. But I don't see so them three dollars over. Yeah, uh, where are their other products here? I'm not seeing a lot of okay, products. Inventory. Let's mm-hmm. look at silver. We click that, and I'm not recommending them, by the way. But they're a large no. seller, and they seem to have a, a good reputation. So if we look at uh, where we have. Kitco. Yeah, Kitco, none of them are holding like a lot of of product here. You could buy Eagles at uh, 1 to 19 for 31.64. Our price we're getting $7 over, which is uh, like 30% premium, 25% mm-hmm. premium. That is not indicative of a large supply overhanging the market, is it? No. No. And that's probably why they are able to charge those prices and they're going for premium prices or, or they're able to charge a premium because the stock is low, right? It's they have supply to. and demand. They have to because they probably paid more for it and they're not going to lose money. So it's either you're going to pay a higher premium or you're going to get zero supply out there because they're not selling at losses. Bullion dealers are not in business to sell at a loss. Here, mm-hmm. One ounce American Gold Eagle, just as a benchmark, uh, I think any any one ounce bullion coin is fine. They're getting fifteen forty three oh nine the ounce. I mean seventy dollar premium over spot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty healthy here. There are other well, ones. I'm, I'm I'm looking at tool, tooling. Yeah, tool, tooling. Yeah, Tulvin. Tolvin, Tolvin, Tolvin yeah. sorry, and it's uh, they have one ounce eagles, all brand new and solid date run, date choice fifty nine ninety five over spot. <laughs> yeah, that's a little insane there, but sixty dollar. We were paying forty fifty dollar premiums. In fact, uh, Stupler, if you sold gold back to them, would give you a piece of the premium. They would pay you over spot, and mm-hmm. I'm sure they're doing that now. And you know this. Tolving is, oh, they're one of the largest, and every dealer that you talk to supplies a problem. Now, it's not because there's not enough raw base silver or gold. That's not it. The pipeline is such that demand has gone up that there's not enough supply in the pipeline. In six months, there might very well be enough. Then again, there might not. So mm-hmm. buy the stuff cheap and sell it high. That's the best advice i can give i mean yeah if i was in the market now i'd be buying it as well i would have been buying it last week at uh, prices under fourteen hundred dollars i mean they're mm-hmm. just insane 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now here, these guys have also, um, how do you say it? Tulving? Tulving, Tul- yeah. Tulving, Tulving. Tulving. Okay, so they have in stock 2009 sealed box American Silver Eagles, uh, $4.99 over spot uh, and 24-hour shipping. Yeah, they're always among the best and most competitive. Mm-hmm. And we also like uh, Regal Assets. That's our sponsor. Uh, those guys will have the supply and they ship within a week. A lot of these companies that you look at, they don't have, they don't have it. And if there's no overnight shipping or shipping within seven days, stay away because they're just going to play with your money. That's mm-hmm. really it. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's just hey, the supply is going to be tight for probably a couple of weeks. And the interesting thing, you watch that price; it's gone up six out of seven sessions. And my feeling is probably going to continue going up. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I just felt that we weren't going to get some kind of double bottom uh, off the last lows. Mm-hmm. Just didn't see it. Unlikely. No. Yeah, unlikely. So, wow. But well, that's a know. that's a that's a good money saving tip right there yeah. that you've just given. <laughs> yeah, buying under fifteen hundred for gold and under yeah. thirty for silver, it's definitely a good way. I mean, it's up twenty eight sixty today, gold on the spot on the Comex and. You know, it just shows they slammed down the price so low that they triggered international demand. I had talked to Bron Sacchecki. He's a, he's head of market strategy over at Perth Mint in Australia. And it's like nobody goes there. They're not lined up around the block. Past few days, they were lined up around the block. And if it continues, then they have to either allocate or stop producing coins because they don't want their certificates to be in deficit because they they issue certificates based on their inventory so if you buy 500 ounces unallocated they've got it in their inventory so they don't let it dip below the amount of certificates in circulation important point but I, I'm, a, I'm against unallocated anyway but it seems if you're going to buy it Perth's got probably probably is the most reliable but I would steer clear of it myself I just don't believe in it but that's my mm-hmm. personal thing. Mm-hmm. So, so on that note, yeah, wild things happening. And what uh, about what about the tweet yesterday that caused? Uh, was it the Dow that went down? No, I didn't. Uh, to, which tweet was that? What did oh, I miss? Okay, well, we heard something last night, and I'm actually search. I meant to search this up this morning. Before I say anything, there was uh, some. I'm looking to see about this. I better just hold off on that until I resource that because there was some tweet yesterday that uh, apparently the Dow went down like 200 marks or some crazy yeah. thing or the investments. Uh, um, and I heard it very late night. I was going to bed and <laughs> I meant to look it up first thing this morning. But, you know, this is just going to be leading to oh, internet here it is. control. Did you find yeah, it? Yeah, I is think it- I found it. AP... Twitter hacked reports White House explosion sends Dow down. I right. missed that. Jeez, where did that come from? Yeah, wow. it was very late last 105 night. 1.05 p.m. Eastern time, it looks like. AP Today? tweeted, breaking two explosions in the White oh, House yeah. so and Barack impressed. Obama is injured. I, I missed that. I don't know how that happened, but it went down 130 points. So if you're a master tweeter and you can hack them, I guess you can make money speculating in the market as well make make lots of money if you knew if that was you knew that was coming and you were shorting hello so hey look if you can't uh, if you can't get tomorrow's newspaper today so you can go bet on things then go create the news yourself and you won't need the newspaper right <laughs> okay well we're not going to advocate for that because we'll be shut down <laughs> yeah we well do. no i don't think it's a good idea and uh, it distorts the markets but it's temporary and Look, I mean, the the market's in bad shape because I don't care if it's going up or not. The earnings season is horrible. And uh, the darling stock of everything, Apple, is just getting the stuffing pounded out of it. I know. Well, I can tell you that um, we sold at about six something on Apple. Bought like at the 200 mark, somewhere in there. So didn't have a lot of stock, but enough. And it was, um, you know, we look at it now and go, wow, this is like, that's the, that was our, that was our best stock. Yeah. And my Uh, sister. Buy and sell ever. My sister bought 100 shares at $8 because my nephew worked for the largest Apple VAR. And this is when Apple 
looked like it was going to go out of business. He said, no, they've got great products. It's going to go sky high. And she held on to it. And eventually she wound up with 400 shares and she sold 200 at around 600 a share. And now she still owns 200 shares of it. But, you know, basically she spent $800 on that stock and it's worth several hundred thousand dollars, better than anything I ever did. Let Mm -hmm. me tell you, even her stockbroker was impressed. Uh, her new uh, financial <laughs> advisor. Bucks, yeah, hey, just things like that don't happen to you and me, to normal people. I uh, know. Yeah, she uh, she managed to do it, so I'm impressed. Wow, so, dude, that's awesome. Best investor I know because on a fixed income, inherited some money, got some money out of a divorce, and you know what? She still has all that money and has lived off of it all these years and wow. still has it. I can't make any claims like that. Gosh, we need to get her on the show. How to say that? You know, there's that's a, a woman great that idea. <laughs> yeah, like, and the beauty is, she admits she doesn't know, know anything. <laughs> yeah, I've been talking to all these experts out there, and none of them can uh, compare to what my sister did. I'll tell you, <laughs> really funny. But uh, yeah, shout out to my sister. And uh, what's you know, her name? Harley. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but you know the apple like that is just the coolest thing and oh, well i mean you know it'll be interesting to see what does get developed with them i mean you know this i mean i was reading doug casey had a um, projection sheet about you know what their forecasts are and what their products are over the upcoming years i well, mean they're you know they still have they still see a resurgence with the pc which i mean you know desktop models mm-hmm. and um you know people going to that um absolutely for, yeah, I mean, I per, I have a laptop. I mean, mm-hmm. I have just about every Apple gadget there yeah. is, other than an iPhone. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone. No. Right? Um, and and for whatever reason, it's because I'm I, I find it difficult to type on there fast. I can type on the BlackBerry way faster. Uh, so, just admit it, you're chauvinistic. It's a Canadian company, <laughs> and you're supporting a Canadian company. It's okay. We forgive you for that. <laughs> I did not own any rim stock. If you, if that's well, what that's you chauvinistic. You're not <laughs> when it comes to putting your money where your mouth is. But seriously, looking at Apple, I mean, I was a PC person died in the wall for 20 some odd years. Finally, Microsoft came out with Microsoft Vista, horrible, horrible operating system, and it made me an Apple person. And now that I do all this graphics and audio and video stuff, really Apple is superior in a number of ways to that. Mm -hmm. But um, my feeling about Apple is if you study the Great Depression, women kept buying cosmetics lipstick during the height of the great depression even while their families were starving and apple is the same company for this depression you will buy you will buy ipads you'll buy iphones you'll buy macs even if you can't put food on the table because it just (laughs) seems like cool thing right way to do it yeah, but they're not going to do that because they've got everything. If you don't have to buy another Apple piece, do you really need it? You will at some point because the things are designed to stop working or mm-hmm. stop working properly. Believe me, I, I'm a power user. You know, you look at my computer, I got 25 programs open at any given time, mm-hmm. and the things just start to slow down after a while. Whether there's a, a bug in there, a virus to stop them, I don't know, but it it's unusual to see somebody that's got a five-year-old computer that works perfectly well. I mean, mm-hmm. You just don't see it. So they're designed mm-hmm. with a replacement cycle. And then there will be the killer app. I don't know what the next one will, will be for the iPhone. Uh, my feeling is they make the screens too damn small. So you have to be a kid to be able to read it. And, you know, that Samsung Note, it's huge. That looks like a good thing, but I just can't bring myself to switch and have to relearn everything. And, and honestly, the the Android operating system for the phone, in my opinion, just doesn't work as well. But if you can live without an iPhone, you know, here's my t- my saving uh, thing for the uh, for the show is you can go uh, buy a phone and forty five bucks a month here in the states. Unlimited data, unlimited voice, and basically with the tax, it's 50 bucks, and you could be saving probably about $100 a month, which is $1,000 a year, 
by dumping all these fancy phones and just going to this generic carrier, their reseller, and getting yourself an Android phone, a basic model. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I mean, well, that new Samsung, I have two um, associates that have them. I mean, they are unbelievable. The size, you know, I mean, they're they're really like iPad mini minis in a sense. I mean, they're so little, and but they still have the capabilities of, you know, that big screen and being able to view everything in big pictures is amazing on that phone. That's the only thing about the BlackBerry that I'm not there. But the, Z, the Z10 looks pretty cool, or Z10, whatever they call it. Um um, I'm going to take a look at that because I just can't have everything Apple. And <laughs> I've had an Apple. I, I actually was one of the first people to buy a desktop Apple like 1992. I think I had my first Apple, 91, something like that. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I, it's I have like you way beat. long ago. I have you we were beat. in creative work, right? So we always had an old one. And then the PC thing was always having, um, you know, there was always viruses and things to deal with in those days. Yep. Yeah, well, I have you beat. My first uh, Apple was an Apple II Plus in 1977. And uh, there wasn't much you could do with it. But whatever you could do with it, I uh, was able to do. And uh, But, you know, buying these uh, cheapy cellular phones you know uh, you know it, next to an obama phone it is about the <laughs> cheapest phone you can find you know those obama phones they object to you calling them obama phones but before obama came in the the subsidy for phone service only applied to landlines and they didn't give out cell phones now they're finding that 40 percent of the people that have these obama phones are scamming they can't confirm that uh, that they're eligible and uh, there's companies that are cleaning up on this and you know it's just it's just an incredible uh, scam but uh, this is the world we live in where the free lunch always gets paid for by somebody else mm. well hence the name obama phone then <laughs> you got it yeah i mean i don't know about the obama phone you didn't hear know. about that no well, i'll uh, send you a uh, video because uh, this lady during the campaign said, you know, she was in Cincinnati, said, everybody's got an Obama phone. I'm voting for Obama because he gives mm-hmm. us stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is uh, this is the world we live in, a free lunch. And uh, evidently they're pretty easy to get if you're on food stamps or you're on public assistance or any number of programs, you can get an Obama phone for free and you get 250 minutes with it. I mean, good deal, you know? So short of getting an Obama phone, hold on a second. Short of getting an Obama phone, Metro PCS is about the cheapest plan. My assistant spends, I think, 45 bucks a month on it. And and, uh, he gets data and everything else. Hmm. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a deal. Yeah. Well, here's here's a little uh, cost-saving thing that... um, I was just having a conversation with uh, Nelson Hultberg, and I know that you're going to be in touch with him because I suggested yeah. him for your conference, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. And I know you haven't spoke to him yet, but anyway, he has just released his book. It's called The Golden Mean, Libertarian Politics, Conservative Values. And I have been reading this book for a week now, and I am serious. Every person on the planet, well, in America, needs to read this book. <laughs> he has, oh, there's Huey. Um He has a lot of charts and he has a lot of information in here just about uh, what is taught in the schools, political spectrum wise, that kind of thing. And and I understand now why the um, progressive movement is working and moving the way that it is, because when you see this chart, it positions, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, it positions uh, the left as an arrow, you know, moving forward, looking to the forward, being progressive. And of course, it, it um, positions the right as basically being uh, stagnant, not moving, traditional, conventional, you know what I mean? Set in ways, don't want to go anywhere. And uh, so it's really quite amazing Um you know, to uh, to read this book and to understand just some of the clear paths. And uh, and the whole golden mean factor is based on um, liberty, uh, is based on Aristotle and finding that balance within and moral values, etc. And um, 
So we were talking this morning about a number of things, and I had uh, expressed to him that Sean and I were working on the Last Real Man and the Last Real Woman websites. And so we had invested a lot of money into building these websites, and then we discovered that we absolutely needed to have, you know, proper, you know, to really have some writers and to employ some people to really take it to where we wanted to go, which would take us up to about twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 extra annually that we didn't really want to spend on the site. But we figured if we're going to do it, that's what it's going to be. So in the meantime, what's happened is we've kind of, we put it on hold for a little bit. And then all of a sudden it came to me, hello, why don't you just make a Facebook page? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and forget the website. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and you know it's what? free. <laughs> and it doesn't cost you anything, and you can load up whatever you can access, do whatever. So uh, I have just chopped that right out of our budget for basically this upcoming year. And I was suggesting that to Nelson that he work that as well, because, I mean, he has the AFR, which is Americans for a Free Republic. And um, they're based in Dallas. And uh, and anyway, so I suggested to him that, you know, the, the website certainly is one way, but getting on Facebook and then just learning how to work Facebook and putting it on there. And I'm going to take excerpts, and he's actually sending me charts and giving me permission to sort of take a lot of information out of the book. So uh, Is that available it, in digital form, the book? Uh, well, I have did speak to him about digital and audio today. So uh, they're getting um, Nelson's a real gold bug, and of course, you know he took a little bit of a hit. <laughs> so didn't he's we um, didn't we all? So I he's um, he's sort of waiting for a rebound right now. But yes, he's on. Uh, he wants to do audio and digital. But you have to read the book, uh, Carrie. It is imperative that you read it. It's um, it's it's unbelievably well written. It's uh, very well researched. Um, you know, he was appealing to, I mean, when he wrote it, I mean, certainly he knew that the scholar crowd would be reading it, but he likes to say that uh, it's the intelligentsia crowd that he really wants to get it to. And then, of course, through them, they would get to mainstream. And um, but um, but it, it is a very good book. He's got some uh, um, really great support on here. So I think that um, anyway, on top of that, you know, promoting his book, I'm just saying that getting on a, um, a Facebook page versus spending money on a big web page if you're promoting specific things, because certainly you can uh, chop down your marketing budget. Absolutely. And combine that with Twitter and other social media. Yeah. Uh, you can really do a lot of things. I mean, like uh, Facebook. YouTube and uh, Twitter, you can put together a media presence without having to design a website. But if you do want to design a simple, basic website, all you got to do is go to WordPress, get a site hosted for about 20 bucks a month on a site like GoDaddy or any number of other ones, and then download the WordPress version. And in about 20 minutes, you can have a credible website that will enable you to do wonderful things and combine your Facebook, your your Twitter, and your YouTube channels into one, kind of unifying. Just put links, a little bit of commentary. It's incredibly inexpensive, easy thing to do. And how else are you saving me money uh, this week, Diana? Well, I came across actually a website that uh, said uh, 71 ways to cut down on your tax bill. And uh, there was just a couple of points that sort of stood out that I thought maybe people, you know, just I'd, I put them out there. But I'd say if you want to learn all of them, they had it broken down in different categories on personal level and, of course, uh, company levels and such. Um, but uh, one of the things that stood out was, you know, taking advantage of your company paying for uh, classes in your education to improve your work skills. So instead of you paying, you know, do it through your company and then have, you know, they're pay you don't get the tax right for it. But, I mean, it's just a way to spend less money because it's a, you know, if you're spending that out, either way, I think you can survive or, or you can um, save money. If you pay for it, then you're getting the tax break. But if the company pays for it, then, you know, it's a, uh, it's a write-off for them, but then it's not a taxable, it's non-taxable on your um, income. So I thought that was pretty good. There was another one here. It was called Use Your House as a Rental for 14 Days and You Don't Have to Declare Any Income. Hey, that is a do great one. Do you know one. you can do it? Yeah. Let me tell you something. There's sites that exist. Uh, one is called Air, B like boy, N like Nancy, B. Air, B and B. And if you got an extra room and you don't mind the potential of uh, 
getting robbed uh, in the middle of the night by one of your <laughs> B&B guests, which rarely happens, uh, hardly ever happens. But seriously, you check the people out, right. you check them out on Facebook, and you make sure that they're legit. You know, I see people here in Florida getting $100, $200 a night in the season, renting these rooms out. Now, technically, you're supposed to charge sales tax and all that, and they might do it, but there's a number of sites and you can find places around the world and you can rent out your extra room or you can uh, can find places extremely inexpensive to stay in places like LA, New York. I mean, a friend of mine, she came here from, where was she from? I think it was Denmark. Yeah. And she wound up, uh, she was at the New Media Expo in the Colos, uh, not the Coliseum, the Javits Center in New York, right by the the river, she stayed in this Frank Geary building, the only one in New York at the time, right on the West Side Highway in the Village for a hundred dollars a night. And I had never stepped foot in that building before. I always was curious about it. So that's the kind of things that you can find, the kind of values, and you handle it through Airbnb so that the money doesn't change hands until you actually go there. But understand that uh, people cancel out the last moment on you and then you're left to scramble for a room. Mm -hmm. But you can really save some serious money that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, they had they had lists and things. I mean, you know, just a couple others was, you know, um, home office deductions, of course, if you uh, have an office at home, which, I mean, I do. And I think most people know that you can... Um, right off an office in your house and expenses related to that, car travel, etc., that type of thing. Um, even if you have uh, if you have a full time position in a company, but you have an office at home where you're working at home at given hours, I think it's this. Uh, I don't know how many hours it is on an annual basis, but anyway, home deductions for offices, of course. Yeah, there was the another states, in the states. That's not the wisest thing because the IRS treats that as a red flag to audit Oh, they you. do, eh? Yeah. So, because everybody was taking them in the U.S., and then they said, no, nope, not quite. But if you need a computer for work, uh, there's no reason you can't write off that computer. And uh, if you're in the media business like yours truly, then all of your cable TV and all of your purchase of subscriptions, of publications, are all for the benefit of your business. And you need to be thinking about it. Yeah, writing those off. And you can uh, write those off anyway, submit those as um, exactly. you know, part of your education for your work. You got it. I love it. Well, yeah. So anyway, I thought that was a good site. I mean, I've got a bunch more that aren't related to the tax, if you want me to delve yeah, into it. Yeah, let's uh, hear it. By the have way, a couple more. By the way, gold's uh, up uh, just $33 the ounce. And makes you wonder, did they just, are they going to have a slam down tomorrow? Probably. How much are they going to get it down? I don't know. But according to Charles Nenner, the end of the uh, the low, which probably will be the low for the metal, but he's not sure. It could be a W low. Not sure about that yet. My feeling is the violence of the smackdown was such that it spent the downward force. It'll probably go up. But again, don't listen to me because you will lose money in the short <laughs> run, I guarantee you. So that's my that's my disclaimer. You You can't sue me saying i followed his advice and i'm not a licensed financial advisor so i don't exactly. give individual advice and if i did you would lose money at it so any judge you sue me you go to court the judge is going to say the guy told you you were going to lose money <laughs> he he absolutely performed his end of the contract you have no reason to be upset case dismissed well, you know, I mean, these prices too, I mean, let's be honest, I mean, going up and down like this, I mean, this is not, I, I know it's part of it, but I mean, that's not generally the way gold and silver people operate. No. You don't buy it for the short term wins and losses, although maybe, you know, the Goldman Sachs team has changed the mentality on that now. But um, I mean, I mean, really, it's supposed to be insurance for your money, no matter what's yeah. going out there, you're of holding 30% of, you know, your, your egg baskets got 30% in gold and silver. That's the, just a good, you got that's it. just a good formula, right? That's it. That's and what it's so, about insurance that's what it's on your about. wealth. It's an that's insurance it. policy, period. 
Yeah. And, you know, you hope you never have to use it. But, you know, we're we're in these times that are very different than anything that's been normal because you've never had the Fed uh, in, you know, involved in the amount of, um, uh, you know, interaction that they do. And I mean, since the gold standard, I mean, just look at the cost of everything that's, um, you know, the change in price of the, uh, the change in, um, sorry, the deficit and how far it's grown. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, so, yeah, I I agree, and you know you need to be thinking about it. Anyway, yeah. Diana, we gotta go. Okay. But, uh, hey, your nice site, talking to you. your site. Good talking to you too. And uh, what's your site and your event coming up? Oh, okay. Well, I'm um, uh, I have no events right now. No I'm events? actually about to take no no events. I'm actually going back into publishing. You know me, I'm a contract person. Yeah. I mean, I have Fashion Week, but uh, Fashion Week won't be till September again. Yeah. And uh, so we're working on the new project right now. So that all comes up in September, and I'm working on some new sponsors and things of that right. nature. But uh, by next week, I'll have a new announcement for you with just some oh, things that good. I'll be working on. Excellent. Well, we've got Very the exciting. we got the Liberty Mastermind Symposium coming up June twenty eighth, twenty ninth in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. You can either go to financialsurvivalnetwork dot com, click the link, or go to libertymastermind dot us. Uh, Martin Armstrong, David Morgan, me, Robert Ian. We got Jeff Berwick's going to be there. We've got just an incredible lineup of speakers. Uh, over fifteen speakers for the day and a great dinner the night before where you get to hang out with the speakers. Not just, we're not just up on pedestals. That's certainly <laughs> never where I want it to be. And you're down, you're down at the drinking level. Yeah, exactly. I'm at the bar. <laughs> I sling up to the bar right next to you. That's the way I do it. So anyway, are you having happy hour? Oh, uh, how can we not, man? I got to <laughs> stay on my diet. You know that the happy hour reducing plan guarantee <laughs> it works. <laughs> anyway, Diana, we'll talk to you again next week. Okay, Kerry. Nice talking to you. You will. When it comes to buying physical gold and silver, Regal Assets is the place to go. Did you know that you can use your existing retirement plan to invest in precious metals and it's 100% tax-free with Regal Assets? I hope you're seriously thinking about using precious metals in your retirement plan to help you beat inflation. It's so simple to use your existing IRA or old 401k to set up your precious metals retirement plan. Request your free investment kit today. It's so helpful and informative that it was recently featured in Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Get the latest info by calling toll-free 855-678-6620. That's 855-678-6620. Or visit regalassets.com and use the code LUTZ. You'll save the setup fees and a whole lot more at regalassets.com. Mm -hmm.